Good morning guys, welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be showing you guys a typical full day of eating for myself. But at the end of the video today, I'm going to be breaking down all of my meals and showing you guys kind of like the breakdown of my calories, my macros, my vitamin and nutrient breakdown on a website called chronometer.com. I've done this a few times on my channel already, but today I wanted to kind of dive like a little bit deeper into the kind of breakdown. Um, before when I did these videos they were really long because I was making them more like vlog style but today I'm going to be just kind of showing you my food, trying to keep it as short as possible and then really dive into kind of like the breakdown part. I've been getting a lot of questions lately that are like um, I'm not getting enough of this certain nutrient or I'm wondering how you can get enough protein on a vegan diet. I'm not sure if I'm eating enough protein or my parents don't want me to go vegan because they think that vegans don't get enough protein, they don't get enough iron, or they don't get any B12, or, you know, situations like that. So I thought that this video would be really, really useful for you guys so that you guys can either show your parents or show whoever, or it will just be helpful for you to see where I get most of my nutrients from so that you can maybe adjust certain things in your diet so that you're getting enough nutrients, if that makes any sense. But yeah, today's day of eating is just gonna be a very typical day of eating, like what I basically eat on like a daily basis, so that it's not anything like spectacular or like a, a big recipe or something like that. Like it's just like a standard meal that pretty much everyone can make on a daily basis, so that it's just like, this is what I eat on a daily basis and these are the nutrients that I'm getting on a daily basis. If that makes any sense, I feel like I'm not making sense right now. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm gonna make some breakfast right now. I'm in a baggy sweater and it feels weird. It is officially fall and I'm, I'm excited because I love fall, but I hate fall because that means that winter's right around the corner and I am not excited for the winter because we skipped last winter. We were in Australia on the beach last winter, so I'm not really excited for this winter. I got I got to get away to the beach this winter. Anyways, that's enough rambling about me not liking the winter. I'm sure you all know that already. You want to say good morning, Jack? He's sleepy. You just look like this big black blob. All right, so this morning I'm gonna make a smoothie for breakfast. <laughs> I swear, every time I go to make a video in the kitchen, we have to have our front door open so that there's enough light in our kitchen so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing. And I swear, every time I go to make a video, people across the street are doing yard work. I swear, every time. It's actually funny. Anyways, it looks like he's moving over there, but I am going to make a smoothie for breakfast this morning. You know, just a typical smoothie. You guys have probably seen me make this smoothie before. Yeah. It's smoothie time, guys. big green smoothie to start my day. Pretty much always start my day with a green smoothie or some type of smoothie at least. But this is probably my favorite combo. It's so good. And actually I'm outside right now and it's pretty nice out. Like it's not cold like the past few days. We've got got some sunshine and wow it's bright. And I think it might actually be a little bit too warm for this baggy sweater. Huh. I really just like can't help 
up vlog when I make these videos. Like I just, I just want to talk to you guys all the time. I just feel like showing my food, just showing my food is so boring. See this pumpkin? I picked this pumpkin myself. Went to the farm. There's a farm near us. It's actually near like where my parents live. And I used to go there every year. I want to go back there again, but I went and picked a pumpkin and I picked some apples. So we have fresh apples off the tree right now and they're so good. I think we need to get another pumpkin so that each Kyle and I will have our own pumpkin and then we can do a pumpkin carving contest because I haven't carved a pumpkin in so long. I really don't think I'm that good at it. I probably won't win, but I think it would be so fun. So I'm just having some grapes as a snack right now. These are literally the best grapes ever. Part of the reason why I love like this time of year so much as well is because these grapes are in season. They're literally my favorite thing and I can only have them like once a year. They're like, I think people call them blue grapes or coronation grapes or concord grapes. I don't know, but they're so good. They're Ontario grown and I'm pretty sure they're grown in Niagara. So it's really, really close to where we're from, which is also really cool. They're just like sweet on the inside and like the skin is like thick and like kind of sour. I don't know if I'm making this sound good or not, but <laughs> also a lot of people ask me if I snack throughout the day, if I have like something after dinner or if I snack in between meals or whatever. And my answer is pretty much always this. I just eat whenever. I eat when I'm hungry, and then I stop when I'm not hungry anymore. If that means I'm having a snack, then I have a snack, but I don't really like see things as meals. I just, I just eat. So I eat as much as I feel like I need to eat in that moment in time, and then I'm not hungry for a while. I don't think about food until I'm like, hmm, kind of hungry again, I want some more food. And then whether that be just having a bowl of grapes or whether that be actually making myself a meal. When I do have like something in between meals, most of the time it's fruit. So right now for me, it's grapes and the fresh picked apples that we got from the farm. I pretty much always just have like some type of fruit or like oranges or something like that. So yeah, I'm just having this bowl of grapes as a snack and then I'm gonna make some lunch soon. some pumpkin pie oats for lunch I've made pumpkin pie overnight oats before actually a few times and you guys have seen me make them but I haven't made them hot and they actually taste very very good the only thing I wish I had was like some vegan yogurt like coconut yogurt on top just to add like that creaminess but other than that it was darn good what do you think do you like my oatmeal it's like what is that
good. You impressed? Pretty tasty. Same old, same old. We've been having this dinner for it's not like... same old, same old. It's new. You use the almond butter instead of peanut butter for the sauce, right? Very true. Okay. I'm excited to eat this. I'm excited to eat this. Are you serious? <laughs> mm. This is basically kind of like a standard dinner, just rice with a bunch of veggies and some sauce. All right, so it is the next morning and now I'm going to sit down and kind of go through everything with you guys. Yes, I'm back wearing the same sweater just because it's just so comfy. This actually isn't even my sweater. This is Kyle's sweater. I just, I've been stealing it. <laughs> so I've tried to be as accurate as possible. As you guys will notice in the video, I tried to be very specific with the amounts that I was eating. So I was really measuring things out and it actually kind of worked out well so that you guys can kind of use these as recipes as well. So that being said, let's get into this. So, as you can see here, I have inputted all of the food that I ate yesterday. I didn't really segregate it into like meals or anything like that. I just kind of plugged everything in. And then when we scroll down here, you'll see my total calories consumed, which is about 2,400 calories, and I'm pretty much always in the same range. I don't count my calories every day. I don't, like, do this every day, but every time I do do this, like, for a video, I'm always in, like, the same kind of range in between, like, 2,200 to 2,400 calories, which is actually pretty perfect for the size of my body. So I'm doing a pretty good job of listening to my body and eating as much food as I desire. Um, and then we come over here and you'll see the macro breakdown so everything that I ate yesterday was about 72% carbohydrates 19% fat and 10% protein that fluctuates on a day-to-day -day basis obviously depending on what I'm eating but those ratios like mostly carbohydrates um, and then a smaller percentage of fat and protein is pretty much how I always stick to my diet that's just pretty much eating a plant-based diet you're eating a high carbohydrate diet by default because most plants are low in fat and lower in protein and higher in carbohydrates let's scroll down this is all the good stuff here so down here is where it breaks everything down for you your carbohydrates your fats your proteins your vitamins and your minerals um, at the top here it'll show you again like your total calorie intake and then your water um, so then down here we've got carbohydrates. So I consumed 459 grams of carbohydrates, 58 grams of fiber, and then we come down here to fats. I didn't reach my target for fat, which is totally fine. The most contributing food to my fat intake was the almond butter and the tofu. I really like about Chronometer how you can just hover over anything and it'll tell you like what is contributing to that vitamin, that nutrient, or that macro the most. Um, and then I've got 242% of my omega-3s and 88% of my omega-6s. Pretty good. Um, again, uh, the, the omega-3s I get mostly from the chia seeds. That's why I really like chia seeds because I think a lot of people um, have troubles getting enough omega-3s. And I think chia seeds, they're the perfect thing. They're also high in protein. And then we scroll down to protein. Now this is what I want to talk a little bit about um, is protein. So a lot of people have told me, I'm sure a lot of you guys still get this question, where do you get your protein or you can't get enough protein on a vegan diet or vegans need to be careful, they need to make sure that they're combining foods properly at each meal so that they're getting complete proteins and all of that is just a big fat myth. So you can, as you can see here in my uh, breakdown, I've reached well over 100% on my protein. <laughs> I got about 71 grams of protein in total and I don't take any protein powders like I did not supplement anything as you guys can see here it's all just coming from whole foods. So the highest contributing food to my protein intake was tofu. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know that tofu is very high in protein. Oatmeal just oats. Oats have about 8 grams of protein in them for just a 3 quarter cup is what I ate yesterday. 
um, brown rice, seven grams of protein, broccoli, six grams of protein, almond butter, five grams of protein, bananas and mangoes, each about four grams of protein. So as you guys can see here, you don't just have to eat a ton of beans or a ton of leafy greens or a ton of broccoli to get your protein. Scrolling down here, this is like the breakdown of all your essential amino acids. I'm sure you guys have heard the term essential amino acids. Everyone kind of talks about that when you're talking about protein. Humans use about 22 amino acids in our bodies. Um, we consider nine of them essential amino acids and then the rest are non-essential. Our bodies can't create the essential amino acids, which is why we need to get them from food. So when, we're, when we eat a form of protein, whether that be from an animal, whether that be from plants, our bodies break down that protein chain into amino acids so that we can build our proteins that we need. Now, when we build protein in our bodies, a lot of us automatically think muscles, gaining like muscle mass, and that's not necessarily true. We have all different types of proteins in our bodies. So we have hormonal proteins, we have hair proteins, etc. So why do, why do people think that vegans can't get enough protein? It's all, I think it all kind of revolves around that plants, um, that plant foods are not complete proteins. There are vegan complete proteins. I think things like chia seeds are a complete protein, hemp seeds are a complete protein, um, and then sunflower seeds. Sunflower seeds or pumpkin seeds, something like that. They're all complete proteins. So there are sources of complete proteins that you can get as a vegan. Clearly this doesn't mean that we can't get all of our essential amino acids. Like we don't, we don't sit here and eat the same thing all day long like let's for example a carrot I don't sit here and eat carrots all day long and only eat carrots and carrots do not have all the essential amino acids which means I wouldn't be getting enough protein or enough essential amino acids or complete proteins or whatever we don't do that as you can see from what I ate today I ate a wide variety of plant foods and if we go back here to my chronometer, you will see that I got all of my protein, I got all my essential amino acids, and those are all coming from all different. So when people say we need to be careful, we need to make sure that we're combining foods properly so that we're getting complete proteins, that's a myth. If you are eating enough calories for yourself, you are eating a wide variety of plant foods, you're going to get all your essential amino acids, and your body's going to combine all of those together and make protein for your body. You don't have to make sure that you're um, getting all of them in one meal. It's just about eating a wide variety throughout the day. All right, so now quickly coming over here to the vitamins and the minerals. Um, as you can see here, I've got, we're all check marks across the board, across all vitamins and minerals, um, even B12. And I take a B12 supplement on a daily basis, but I didn't even incorporate that into my breakdown today. But I got my B12 from my spirulina, which I thought was really, really cool. I love spirulina. It's just a really great superfood, a really great boost. Also very high in iron. Um, now, funny story with iron. I'm going to talk about iron next. I was um, considered anemic before I went vegan, and my doctor recommended me to up my red meat intake and also take an iron supplement, and I still was feeling the effects of having really low iron. And then I told my doctor I was going to... I was plant-based now. I stopped taking my iron supplement, and I wanted to get a blood test done to see my iron levels. And then... So we got my blood test done, and then... Um, I got the results back and he walked in the, in the room, closed the door and was like, you have the most perfect blood test I have ever seen. This plant-based diet must really be working for you. So now I'm getting all my iron just through eating plant foods. Um, I don't have to supplement or anything like that anymore. Um, but yes, so the spirulina, very high in iron, five milligrams of iron for just that one teaspoon. Um, tofu, oatmeal, chia seeds, brown rice, all really great sources of iron as well. Um, I also calcium, just quickly wanted to mention that um, I am not a certified almond milk nutritionist or doctor or anything like that. I'm not here to as well. tell you exactly what to do or how to cure any type of ailment you have. So I'm just cool. here Got sharing a lot of what I know that, works for um, me and also what I've and learned along tofu my really journey in hopes well. that this will um, somehow help you. Maple syrup, pretty high in calcium, so that's pretty cool. 
Um, and then everything else here, like, we are good to go. We're good to go. Yeah. I pretty much really wanted to discuss, like, the main things that people have issues with, so I really hope that this was helpful for you guys. I hope that it gave you a little bit more insight to protein and iron and stuff like that, and I hope that if you're struggling with getting enough nutrients that this helped. It's all really about eating a wide variety of plant foods and eating enough plant foods. Because if you're not eating enough food on any diet, you're not going to be getting enough nutrients that you need. It just is kind of like common sense. I don't stress about anything. I don't stress about protein. I don't stress about getting enough of any certain nutrient. I don't even track this every day. Like, I just eat and I know that I'm eating enough because I eat when I'm hungry and I eat till I'm full and I just really feel like I'm more in line with how we're supposed to eat. I'm eating from the earth, I'm eating till I'm satisfied and as you can see here, I am totally getting all my check marks, I'm getting 100% on pretty much everything here so I'm doing a very good job. So I really hope that this video helps. A lot of you out there, you can show your parents this, you can show whoever this that is telling you that you can't get enough protein on a vegan diet or you can't get B12 or you can't get iron or whatever. I also just quickly wanted to mention that I am not a certified nutritionist or doctor or anything like that. I'm not here to tell you exactly what to do or how to cure any type of ailment you have. I'm just here sharing what I know works for me and also what I've learned along my journey in hopes that this will somehow help you, but yeah. I'm sorry if this video was really long. <laughs> hope this video helps. Hope you guys got some insight. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Share it with somebody who told you that you can't get enough protein on a vegan diet. Um, leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!